Selamat siang sahabat Kompas uh, Kali ini kita mendapatkan wawancara yang sangat istimewa Yaitu Sekretaris Jenderal Himpunan Bangsa-Bangsa Asia Tenggara atau ASEAN Yaitu Dr. Kao Kim Horn Well, thank you very much for this opportunity Dr. Kao How do you think that we can implement the ASEAN centrality in a realistic way? And do you actually believe like the 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 global major powers actually uh, actually you know believe and willing to also you know adhere to the ASEAN centrality values? So we see things are evolving rapidly. Of course, ASEAN centrality has been discussed, been debated, even been questioned. But the thing for us in ASEAN, we know very well what we mean when we talk about ASEAN centrality. ASEAN does not choose side or take side. I think what we've seen now is that ASEAN has been working to lead in the ASEAN established ASEAN-led mechanisms uh, for the interests of ASEAN member states both individually and collectively, but also for interests of our external partners. So it's important that we uh, engage in what has been the culture of dialogue and the habit of consultations, which has been the established ASEAN practices and the way we do that is to ensure that we engage in uh, confidence building, in trust uh, enhancement, particular strategic trust, but also in ensuring that what we do are done in the most inclusive, open and transparent manner. And that's how we build uh, the relationship within ASEAN, among the member states, but also with our external partners like other partners, sectoral partners, different partners, and other external, external partners. So, yes, uh, there are a number of what we call the geopolitical competition, uh, geopolitical rivalry, economic competition, among others. But I think for us, we are interested in ensuring that our region remain peaceful, stable and secure, and particularly to focus on the priorities of ASEAN, and that's basically building the ASEAN Prosperity Agenda. How does maintaining that uh, peace and stability and prosperity when the ASEAN region itself is under the threats of instability, uh, such for example is like what happened in the South China Sea. Now we agree that we should expedite the negotiation of COC. So uh, we believe that this is uh, the right way to do it, is through ensure that we have this code of conduct which is substantive, meaningful, and of course uh, to be agreed upon by the concerned parties or party states to the uh, DOC. Uh, I understand that, of course, this is really the commitment from uh, ASEAN side, but also from China, to work on this. Uh, how much time will, uh, will it need, we, we're not sure, because I think the process uh, is equally important as the outcome. And how do you think that we bring this uh we have the COC and then the ASEAN Outlook on Indo-Pacific with their vision of their outlook on Indo-Pacific because for example like the US uh, they believe in the freedom of navigation and freedom of flight um, is it uh, parallel to what we want in the ASEAN Outlook on Indo-Pacific what do you think about that? Uh, for us uh, certainly of course uh, we want to make sure that uh, our own AOIP would be uh, the one that uh, should be uh, implemented in the four priority areas. Uh, second, of course, we expect our external partners to support those four areas of priorities. 
and to ensure that uh, their support and our desire would go along together. And I think what ASEAN really want is that number one, we want to continue that we have the maintenance of peace, civil security in the world, in the region, in our region. Uh, second, that we focus on the development and prosperity agenda so that we expect uh, the external partners, our developers, to support uh, our priorities in terms of uh, development and prosperity agenda. And third, of course, that uh, we want to make sure that what we do is being done transparently. Uh, what our, uh, you know, uh, we, we have no hidden agenda. We, we've always been very transparent. At the same time, we expect uh, our external partners not do anything but undermine ASEAN centrality in the AOIP as has been uh, put out already. So I think it's important that uh, we want to have the support uh, from our external partners. So uh, ASEAN uh, believes that by working together, we can build trust. By working together, we come to better understand each other. By working together, we are able to uh, benefit uh, from uh, our engagement. So I think that's what we see now. At the same time, right now, ASEAN is uh, working to elevate the ballot FTAs. And how, uh, how do we ensure that the, the intra-ASEAN trade is going to, uh, to expand with, with the same commodities? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to ensure that the external partners, when they are uh, trading with ASEAN, is, do you think it's if is it fair if they're going to choose like a certain ASEAN member as their trading partners in compare of like spreading the spreading the investment to other member states? From the uh, secretary point of view, we like to see investment and in flow of FDIs from overseas from our dollar partners be spread throughout the region. Uh, but of course, uh, we. Uh, we have to uh, keep, uh, I think, reminding our uh, dollar partner countries that uh, ASEAN is a region that uh, provides opportunities for, for their uh, private investor, for their companies. So we hope that uh, there will be uh, more investment across the board. I understand that this is changing rapidly now. But at the same time, of course, uh, the point that uh, how we would increase in char as in trade would be produced the same. I think there's a lot of advantages because all of us have our own respective com competitive advantages. So I think, uh, again, is to ensure that we are able to support each other uh, in terms of the uh, whether uh, food or energy security, but also in terms of what we can do more together. In terms of tourism sector, if more ASEAN citizens travel in the ASEAN zone without visa, for example, we can see a new dynamics. So I think that's why our economic ministers, ASEAN economic minister, are looking at what more can be done, particularly to in increase ASEAN trade and investment in tourism. I think this is really good because at the same time, we're not uh, looking at uh, reducing our uh, export uh, with our external partners, no. Uh, external partners, we continue to engage them as well. That's why, for example, we continue to do more trade with uh, Japan, with Korea, with China, with India. Of course, also we want to do more with US, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and with the EU, for example. By uh, continuing to work on more trade, more investment, we expect that the economy will continue to grow. So far, what is your opinion about the development regarding Myanmar? And also, of course, like we cannot ignore uh, the criticism from our external partners, especially from our uh, Western partners, thinking that maybe ASEAN is working too slow, maybe because this consensus system, it's uh, it's not really effective or efficient in dealing the matters because um, because, for example, like the European Union, they have their their different system where if something happened within their member states, they have a, perhaps a a direct approach to to solve it. And regarding uh, 
the Myanmar issues. Uh, do you think we have done enough or is there something more that we could do? I think we should not expect to have a quick fix to the Myanmar issue because we have always said that Myanmar uh, crisis will have to be uh, Myanmar-led, Myanmar-owned process. So ASEAN will be in a, a position to facilitate uh, the dialogue, facilitate uh, the work there. I think the role of the ASEAN chair and the uh, role of the special envoy of ASEAN chair would support this ongoing uh, work. There is uh, one of the major concerns about Myanmar is because they're getting the weaponries from China and Russia. And how does ASEAN engage those two partners on uh, stopping the junta, uh, on providing arms to the junta? Well, I think we have uh, a call upon everyone to, sub uh, to stop uh, supplying arms to Myanmar. I think this is uh, very clear that uh, but we don't know who supply arms to Myanmar, could be uh, from all sources. But I think the, uh, the bottom line is that we should end the, uh, uh, any su uh, supply of arms to Myanmar uh, for the time being, because I think what we see now is uh, uh, the violence on, on the ground. Sahabat Kompas, demikian wawancara khusus kita dengan Sekretaris Jenderal Himpunan Bangsa-Bangsa Asia Tenggara atau ASEAN, Dr. Kau Kim Horn. Uh, terima kasih telah bersama kami dan sampai jumpa di wawancara khusus Kompas berikutnya.